the lords and the ladies, may I introduce to you Caroline de Mercier. Hi. I'm a storyteller from the Middle Kingdom. And the story I'm going to tell you goes back to the 1500s. And there have been many versions of it told over the years, particularly in the Hebrew community. And I'm going to tell you my version. There once was a king who was very powerful. He liked being king. He liked being powerful. But just then, there were no wars going on. The crops were doing well. He was getting a little bored. And he decided to ask his advisors what he could do to make things a little more lively. Actually, to make himself feel more powerful. And his advisors thought and thought, and they had many ideas. But one of them was, Your Majesty, if you could move a whole group of people out of your kingdom, it would be better than warfare. You'd show real power. And he thought, oh, I could try that. But who would I move out? So again, they thought and they conferred. And someone suggested various ones. And finally they said, the Jewish community. And the king thought, well, I don't know. They, they, they haven't caused any trouble, but hmm, let me think on it. The next day he came back and told his advisors, I have it worked out. We're going to have a debate in sign language, a silent debate. And his advisors went, uh, all right, because they didn't know anything about a sign language or well, debates without talking. So the king said, I will give a sign and a champion from the Jewish community will have to answer the sign. And I will give three signs and they must answer each one correctly. But if they don't, we'll make them all move out. And his advisor said, oh. All right. So they went to the Jewish community and they said, we need a champion to go against the king. They chose Monday, next Monday, in a silent debate, a debate in sign language. The king will give signs and you will respond with an appropriate sign. Well, the doctors, the lawyers, the butchers, the bakers, the candlestick makers, nobody wanted to do this. And they argued and they argued who would go against the king. But they all thought, well, if we miss it, any one of them, we'll make our people leave. We don't want to be responsible. So they didn't have a champion. But then legend tells us a man who was called Yanko came back in the community after a buying trip. He was a chicken man, chicken, eggs, feed. And they said, Yanko, Yanko, you, you're going to go against the king Monday in a, in a, a contest, a silent debate. And the uncle said, why me? I don't have much education. I, I, I can't do that. But when he heard all the reasons, he realized that if he didn't, and no one did, they'd lose by default. And the uncle, being an honorable man, decided he'd go. He'd do it. Monday came, and the king and his advisors were all ready. The king was in his royal robes, and they processed out. And poor Yanko was just, oh, his legs were shaking. He was terrified. And the king said, do you understand? I will give a sign, and you will respond. And he said, yes, your majesty. The king said, my first sign is. And Yanko went like this. And the king said, what a good response. I am impressed. And all the people that have been watching went, oh, because nobody else knew what either sign meant. And the king said, and for my next sign, it's, and Yanko went like this. And the king said, correct again. I am very impressed. And the people all went, oh. Because again, they didn't know what it meant. And then the king reached into his pouch, 
and brought out this piece of cheese that was kind of crumbly, like like a uh, crumbly cheese. <laughs> and Yanko looked, reached into his pouch, and brought out an egg. And the king looked for the cheese, the egg, and said, "Correct again, such wisdom! And from you, a little chicken man, you may stay in my community with my blessings." And he went parading back into the palace, and his advisors followed, going, ah, what, what went on? When they got in the room, the king said, that was some debate. I first said, the Jews are scattered all over the face of the earth, and Yankel answered, we are one in the hand of God, and his people went, then I signed, there are two people whom you must serve, meaning me, the king on earth, and he the king above. <coughs> and Yanko said, no, your majesty, my people have but one true ruler, he that reigns above. And then I brought up this piece of old cheese, it's crumbling, to show that the Jewish religion is old and probably crumbling. But Yanko brought out an egg to say, no, your majesty, it is fresh and whole. Such wisdom. And his people went, Meanwhile, <laughs> back in the Jewish community, they're all saying, Yankel, Yankel, what was going on? We didn't understand. And Yankel said, I don't know. I don't, really don't know. It looks like the people said, reach out and hit me. So I put up my fist to say, you better not. <laughs> and it looked like the king was going to poke out my eyes. So I put up my finger to defend him. And then, I think when he realized I wasn't going to take anything off him, he brought out his lunch, so I brought out my lunch. <laughs> <laughs>